the morning. It's quite chilly in Cerritos. I woke up, it was 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. <laughs> Coming from 90 plus, hot and warm. Uh, so, well, let's uh, invite Holy Spirit God to this chilly morning. So Holy Spirit, come, touch us, speak to us, minister to us, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Be the Lord and Master of our lives, Lord. Convict our heart, Lord, as we are going to find out in the scripture today. In Jesus' name, amen. I left you yesterday with Jesus telling whoever without sin, throw your first stone. Well, then verse 9 of chapter 8 of John. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those who accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Wow. Powerful. Then he said, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Whew. Very emotional scripture here. Do you bring light of light of Jesus to every situation? Or do you bring darkness, fighting spirit, ugly spirit? about that and be honest with yourself what do you bring to the table my last child bought this hat he said she said it was for winter to cover my head it's pretty warm uh, there are three kinds of sinners in this text, number one, unmasked sinner. The adulterous woman was unmasked, came out, found out, revealed. She was caught in action of adulterous relationship but by herself. She had adulterous relationship by herself. But anyways, she was found out. Then there is a masked sinner, the Pharisees and scribes who mask themselves as holy, religious, spiritual, and yet in reality, they are the greatest sinners. Then we have sinners in the mass, the crowd, the multitude, who kind of help each other, like, well, you sin, I sin, we all sin, you're okay, I'm okay. Well, everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. Well, 60% of American men are in, 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 somehow connected to internet porn. So yeah, I mean, everybody's doing it. And you kind of bring it to casual conversation, talk about your favorite porn site as if it's normal. Try to normalize sin. So Jesus says, what kind of sinner are you? We all have sin, came short of the glory of God. So what kind of sinner are you? And one by one, it's interesting how the oldest first, all holding on to the rock, uh, oldest realize it hurt their conscience. Like, well, what am I doing? You know, what have I done? What am I trying to do here, right? Kill her, really? What about my sin? So they start thinking. 
Uh, I mean, in this scenario, who alone can really condemn the woman? One who was holy, Jesus Christ, sinless man. He's the only one who condemned her. So when everybody left, Jesus said, woman, did no one condemn you? She said, no, Lord. Imagine how Jesus is connecting with the woman and understanding. Let's go see you. Uh, see, I'm a, as a, a certified lay counselor, there's a cure. In this step of cure, C is to connect, right? Safety and all that triangle. And U is to understand. So it's critical that you connect and understand. Then you could only respond, right? A lot of the, a lot of the stuff preachers do is that when we find something that we start responding right away. We don't connect. We don't even understand. You should not have sinned. Are you connecting? Are you understanding? Do you have this invita invitational posture when you talk to people? Or you are aggressor, you, people, you offend people. And all the stuff that you said is correct, except, yeah, you offended the man. So now he's, it's right and wrong, it's not irrelevant now. So connect and understand. That's what Jesus is doing. Jesus connects with her understands her and then responds and his response i do not condemn you because my life goal is to save everybody my life goal is to forgive everybody my life goal is that they will no longer sin again sin no more he didn't say i don't condemn you go ahead enjoy your lifestyle go have sex with every man you want that's not jesus right Jesus doesn't tell alcoholic, yeah, let's drink. Yeah, well, yeah. With, you know, well, let's smoke some pots. Yeah, I know you're born that way. Oh yeah, you, you have a drinking gene. So blame it on drinking gene. <laughs> oh, you're born as homosexual. So, okay, yeah, sure. No, we'll sin no more, you know. People say that, Pastor O, are you asexual? because you're a preacher for so long? No, I was talking to my spiritual mentor who was at the time 100. You know, we talked about, I asked him very openly about, you know, Sanim, you know, the sexual desire as a man. What, what, what age does it go away? He said, I'll let you know. Wow, he was 100. <laughs> he was humorous. We're all laughing. But then I realized, yeah, you know, don't you think every man have want to have the sexual desire to have sex with a younger woman and pretty woman, of course. But do we go on, act on it? No. No. Right? Same thing. Same thing. I hear the Lord said, yeah, I don't condemn you that you thought about having sex with a younger woman, but don't do that anymore. Fight with the sin until you bleed. You struggle and and and, and uh, do things in your life. Make sure that you pr you pr you be protected from that. You know, thirty seven years of my marriage, I haven't counseled one woman on a one on one private setting. Why? Because I don't trust myself. Right? Do something that you know. Right? Gee, that that day, this woman met a savior forgives her, do not condemn her, accepts her as who she is and tell her, don't go sin, no more, don't do anything. Try to live a holy life, but you cannot do it on your own. You need the Holy Spirit God. And then he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. He says, I am the way. I'll guide you. I am the truth. I'll get you, set you free. I am the life. I'll give you eternity. I am the light. I'll make you shine. And can you say amen to that? Let me repeat it so good. I am the way. I'll guide you. I am the truth. 
I'll get you free. I'll set you free. I am the life. I'll give you eternity. I am the life. I'll make you shine. I know a pastor whose name is Shine and his wife's name is Arise. So <laughs> their couple is called, hello, couple called Arise and Shine. Couple Arise and Shine. I'll be meeting him today. We're doing some work together. It's amazing. Light of life. He said, I am the light of life. Because when we have Jesus, Holy Spirit, God burns within. We just glow. Wow. Have you met somebody who encountered Jesus and Jesus got into them and they just glow? And, and, and sometimes it continues and even greater, the light becomes greater. I mean, when I think about like Pastor Bong, Pastor e Esther, Esther An, and these godly people, wow. the glow within just is amazing. You know, every time we meet them, think like, I think we just met Jesus. You know, because they're so natural. But sometimes when people receive Jesus and they're glowing and then the worries of the world and all this negativity and the world, the thorn, and concern, complaining, covers. And the light does not shine any longer. Jesus says in John 12, 35, 36, we're going to learn later, but he says, you may be the children of light. Jesus says, you will be the children. You are children of light. I am the light of the world and you are the children of light. Even John later in the first John, not in the gospel, first John 1, 5, he says, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with the one was the author of life. We need to walk in life. Paul says in Ephesians 5a, walk as children of light. Right? Also referring to the first Thessalonians 5.5. 5. So talk about these people who's been walking with God, walking with Jesus. The element of light is critical. That, hey, you have the source of light. You, are, you have Jesus in you. You better shine. Right? Arise and shine, pastors. That's what I want to do. I believe that woman, when we go to heaven and meet her, the adulterous woman of John 8 should be in heaven and how she walked in light ever since she encountered Jesus like the Samaritan woman. Samaritan woman was just, wow, encounter Jesus and bam, she becomes this evangelist. She becomes the light that shines in the darkness of her community. And you know, what's humbling is that many, many places I visited, cities, even in Cambodia recently, just got back from there and meet a lot of the saints who becomes the source of light because they encounter Jesus. And when they were encountering Jesus, they didn't even know because they didn't have the context. No one told them about Jesus. They just cry out to the sky and said, the owner of sky, please save my children. And later found out that owner of sky was Jesus, the God. And, and, and she recognized the spirit. That's just a beautiful part. You know, we think somehow that, oh, unless I go and have this messianic complex, like, oh, unless I go, they're not going to encounter God. No, don't have that messianic complex. God is at work. And in midst of darkness, this lady cried out, looking at the sky, the owner of sky. I don't know the name of God. I don't know Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rohai, Jehovah Al Shaddai, Jehovah, right? But the owner of sky saved my sons from Kamaruj soldiers. Let's walk in light as Jesus 
is in us and shines through us. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, gospel, daily gospel, love you. I see you tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.